Welcome to our video series illustrating our textbook, Elementary Abstract Algebra, Examples and Applications. I'm your host, Chris Thrawn, that's me. Let me talk a little bit about the title. Take this word for word. First of all, let's focus on this word algebra. You should be familiar with algebra. Perhaps the first thing that comes to your mind is the unknown x. So we'll be dealing very much with unknowns or variables. And we will be building on the type of algebra that you've seen in high school and elementary college algebra. Next word I want to focus on is abstract. This is a different kind of algebra. The algebra you've seen before has to do with integers or real numbers or rational numbers. We're going to do algebra with other quantities. You might have done algebra with matrices, for example, or complex numbers. These are also examples of algebra. They're using different number systems. We're going to go very general and talk about general number systems. In particular, we're going to introduce the notion of groups, rings, and we may get to fields. These are general abstract structures that you do algebra in. They're in, in some ways generalizations of the number systems that you know and are familiar with. Next word I want to go to is elementary. This is a basic textbook. It's supposed to go step by step. It's supposed to give you helping materials and all the aids that you need in order to be able to master this topic. So we do go uh, step by step uh, and try to make a learning curve that's not too steep. How do we do this? We use examples and applications. We feel that use that when one masters examples, one is able to master the general concepts, but if one doesn't have good mastery of the examples, it's difficult to master the abstract general concepts. So we spend a great deal of time talking about examples, much more than most textbooks on al abstract algebra. We also focus on applications. More and more abstract algebra actually has practical uses in science and technology. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Now you can see many people have contributed to this book. Uh, Justin and I are the main editors. We have used a lot of material from other authors who generously and freely shared their material with us. Todd Judson, who wrote an entire abstract algebra book that we've adapted. And uh, Dave Morris, Joy Morris, who wrote a book on discrete mathematics. We've taken some chapters from there. So the good parts of what they've done, uh, we thank them for. Uh, the bad things that we've changed, we, we take full responsibility. Uh, in addition, there are other contributors who have been uh, students or adjuncts at uh, A&M Central Texas. And this is a living project. There are additional students working on different parts. And the textbook is growing, and we're excited about that. Now, if you go to the table of contents, you will discover that the book is quite long. 500 pages and growing. Now, the reason for this is that we break things down step by step. We enable this, we, we intend this to be a book that you can follow on your own, that you don't need an interpreter or a professor to explain what each thing means. We give lots of aids, and as I said, we really break things down. Now, if you have the PDF version, they have uh, links. If you click on the blue writing, it will take you to where you want to go. There is also an online version that's under development. Now, the foreword talks about our philosophy in writing this book. In particular, it emphasizes the importance of examples. Most mathematicians have a lot of examples in the back of their mind when they're doing mathematics. I kind of think of it as a zoo. And these examples help them to understand abstract concepts. So what we're trying to do is build up your zoo so that you have examples in the back of your mind that help you understand when you run across new concepts. You say, hey, I've seen that before. I understand that definition. I understand why you're going that way in that proof and that argument. The foreword also talks a little bit about applications. One great area that abstract algebra is becoming important in is information processing, in the transmission of information, and in the securing of information through cryptography. Another application of abstract algebra is physics. Physics, much of physics is based on symmetry, and abstract algebra is the mathematics of symmetry. 
So you may find some applications to art and of course also to physics.